Hey guys, thanks for joining me for a new video. Today we're gonna do my December 2020 passive income report. I'm gonna share with you how many sales, how much revenue, and how much profit I made from the various e-commerce uh, complementary business models that I talk about on this YouTube channel. That includes Amazon FBA, Amazon Merch, Amazon KDP, drop shipped print on demand, which is what I call all my print on demand sales that are not Amazon Merch. And in addition to that, I also lump in my AdSense revenue from a popular website that I run and my YouTube channel. So if you guys are interested, let's get started. Real quick, just wanted to remind you I run a weekly print-on-demand giveaway that you can enter for free using the link in the description. This week, sponsored by Flying Upload, Print-on-Demand Upload Automation, Automate POD, Print-on-Demand Design Automation, and All-American Graphics Pre-Made Professional Quality Graphics. So thank you to all the sponsors. Right next to that link, I've got a link to where you can find my free mini courses to get you started with the um, passive income ventures that I talk about in this video. And right next to that, I've got a link to my Facebook community if you would like to join. All right, let's start by talking about Amazon FBA. I did 960 sales, bringing in $16,194 in revenue, of which I got to keep $4,886 as profit for a gross margin of 30%. And that's a pretty high margin, but the story behind this, if you guys missed my income reports leading up to December's, is that Amazon was imposing some pretty harsh inventory restrictions on us. And when I am running my FBA business, I want it to be passive and hands off because as you guys know, I'm working on a lot of other stuff too. And Amazon FBA is honestly probably the most passive one that I do, unless I'm launching new products, in which case pretty active. But again, for the product life cycle, it's front loaded. After that, it's just kind of, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of repetition after that and it's pretty easily streamlined. So anyways, when I'm trying to keep my existing products that are established in stock, I don't want to send in, you know, a third of the inventory that I actually need or 50% of the inventory that I actually need. Because think about it, the suppliers that are used to my bigger orders are going to be like, why is this so small? And then they're going to make me pay more per unit, you know, that's and also shipping too. It's not helping the shipping costs. So I was a little bit stubborn about that, but also, I mean, I was pretty well maxed out with my inventory. Like I'm trying to keep my best selling brand in stock, which fortunately is evergreen. It doesn't see a big spike during the holidays. Um, so the units that actually led to me, cause that main brand is for the most part out of stock. Actually, as of recording this, it's completely out of stock, but in the first half of December, I had at least one SKU that was still in stock. But right now, like what really fueled my sales is that uh, first column that you see there on the left-hand side, which has a really high profit margin built in. I'm surprised actually uh, how much I'm able to charge for it and how much the competition is charging for it because I'm actually one of the cheapest ones. Like on page one, I might be the cheapest and I've still got like I think a 35% profit margin built into it. Um, cheap plastic item serves the utility. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will say that it is related to the website that I run ads on that I talk about in the, um, in the AdSense part of my videos. So here's my AMS stats, my advertising stats for the month of December. My spend was really, really low and really down, but that's because I had a lot of products that were just out of inventory and I'm not paying to advertise products that I don't have any quantity of. So that makes a lot of sense in that case. And, um, you know, the, the low orders too, I mean, these products that I'm selling for the most part are established. They already rank very well. So I'm not leaning too heavily on ads in order to move them. They sell, you know, this is pretty much the Amazon FBA seller dream, right? When you don't really need to lean on ads to move units and guys, you can get there. Just don't give up. I mean, I'm not saying you'll get there in a hyper competitive niche, but if your niche selection, your niche targeting is good, it is very reasonable to think that if you put together a really nice listing, do some good advertising, are intentional in your keyword targeting, like you can achieve um, what I'm achieving, put it that way. Like I don't consider what I did this month to be anything spectacular and, um, you know, still took home how much, what did I say? $4,886. So, I mean, that's, that's a darn good month for um, a passive business when half my products were out of stock. All right, Amazon Merch. I did 2,094 sales and the revenue totaled to, and this is after I convert the international sales, $35,354.49. My royalty was $4,608. Average royalty, $2.20. So the majority of my sales came through from the US market. I actually did $4,400 profit there. Uh, UK brought in 
did I reverse those symbols? I always get them confused. I think that's right. Uh, UK with about 800 pounds sterling and Germany 188 euro. I actually had like two or three sales in March or March in France. And then I lumped the French sales into the Germany sales. Because I didn't feel like redoing the whole template for these income reports. But in case anybody was wondering, um, I don't list too many products on those other markets. The ones that I do are like very specific because I think they might have like really broad appeal. But it's not too many. So I think I had like two or three sales in, in uh, France. That had I had more international, more international sales doing uh, KDP. So, I mean, the real story here is my uploads probably. I mean, I think I'm at like 98,000 out of 100. Again, all evergreens. So I should see consistent sales year round, not just tethered to the holiday season or to the election or to any one holiday. You know, I'm doing this to be kind of hands off. Even though I have been pretty hands-on lately, I'm not going to lie. I've been running experiments with um, increasing pricing, trying to see, you know, if it results in less sales. But I, it, in theory, it could result in less sales with more uh, profit. So I'm experimenting there. And so far, so good. Although I'm still only like a week in and I'm still like going back in time and updating the pricing of my products that have sold. But I'm aiming to make like $5 royalty per sale. So after you guys remember that video I did with Juna, that interview um, a week or two ago. And we talked about increasing pricing, so I'm going for it. And uh, I, may, I may experiment also with running some ads. Because with Producter, this Chrome extension for Amazon Merch, you can pretty easily, even though, I mean, I exported today. You guys are, you guys are going to laugh, but I exported 44,000 products from Producter into like a CSV and then I'm going to grab the, the ASIN column and use that to essentially run. I'm going to experiment here, but I'm going to experiment with running ads on AMS, extremely low ball bids, auto campaigns. So basically the minimum, like easy mode way of doing it. I'm not trying to spend forever setting up ads for t-shirts, um, on Amazon merch. I just don't think it's required. So unless there's like some niche that you want to dominate and that's a separate use case, not what I'm trying to do here. So anyways, I'll let you guys know how that goes. Here's a breakdown of my sales by day. As you can see there, there was a big cliff fall around what December 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, like essentially whenever that red text started showing up on the listing saying, Hey, this may arrive after Christmas, everybody experienced a drop off in sales. And, um, that's what you see reflected here. Although I will say we're in January and I've done like, I did a hundred dollars profit yesterday and I think like 95 the day before. So January has been all right. All right. My breakdown by product type, primarily standard t-shirts, hoodies came in second. I wish I uploaded more to hoodies now that I'm feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I could be selling more hoodies and I, I'm falling a little bit short there. Um, 3% premium t-shirts, which is surprising. I did intentionally upload some of the products that I really liked as far as my design goes or my, you know, niche sub niche goes and based on the competition and the, how the designs turned out, I was also uploading them to premium t-shirts, which helped me reach that 98,000 number, even though I did say I was going to go for all unique standard shirts. But I mean, here and there I had to deviate from that, but premium t-shirts, I talked about my strategy for doing that. If the standard t-shirts started running out of stock, cause we've seen that I think two years ago, various sizes and colors and fit types, we're running out of stock at Amazon merch. So people that had uploaded to premium t-shirts saw a benefit. So that's kind of my thinking when I did that um, this year, but we didn't seem to have that issue this year. All right. Breakdown by fit type men, 61% women, 27% kids, 6% and uh, unisex, which just get lumps in like tank tops. Also, you know, um, raglan, are they unisex? I can't remember. Um, sweatshirts, hoodies, etc. A lot of them are unisex. Breakdown by color, uh, dominant black, uh, navy blue, heather gray, royal blue, white, heather blue. Um, so the usual suspects, let's say. All right, my uploads update, 97,899 out of 100,000. I'm kind of reserving like 2,000 slots there just in case I need them. Um, otherwise, I would just push that number to say 100,000 out of 100,000. All right, drop ship print on demand sales. I did 439 sales. My profit was $1,682.47 on the month. Now, I didn't mention that month over month on Amazon Merch. Let me jump back up. Uh, I did I did $1,834 more in royalties in December than November, even though a lot of people I talked to had better months in November than December, which is interesting. 
Now, the flip side of that, so I had a better month on Amazon Merch. My dropship print on demand sales actually suffered in December, but it makes a lot of sense because most of my sales come from Amazon.com from Seller Central. And I have my print on demand products, most of them, like the vast majority, set the handling time to be to be like four to six weeks. And as you can imagine, that means that from early December onwards, it tells the customer, hey, this may not get to you in time for Christmas. The reason I do that is intentional, even if it nets me less money. I want to keep my seller account in good standing because I don't want this messing with my other Amazon businesses. So it's just one of those things. It's a trade-off and um, something I do intentionally. So, And I recommend you guys consider that in fourth quarter. Otherwise, Amazon's just going to spam you with those action required confirm shipment you guys know what i'm talking about i'm sure you guys have that are selling on amazon have seen at least one of those all right so amazon.com i did 230 sales amazon.co.uk five sales ebay five sales etsy zero redbubble 178 spreadshirt seven t public t spring zero zazzle 14 so that is the summary on the month my best day I did 17 orders in a day and took home $315 of profit from, well, and then you have to detract the Amazon fees. So that's probably about, I don't know, something like $250 profit if I had to guess, ballpark. And my Amazon EU sales were not that great. I'm guessing that may have something to do with like reduced economic activity over there since I believe they are locked down again. So that may have something to do with it. Here's a quick peek at my breakdown of profit from my top four platforms. Amazon.com brought in $1,060, Redbubble $431, eBay $65, and Amazon.co.uk $55 all profit. My reward, I got a printful volume discount of 7%. And I guess it's worth mentioning that in these numbers, I don't factor in. So like for eBay, Amazon.co.uk, Amazon.com. Anything that Printful is fulfilling, I believe I had a uh, 8% volume discount from last month and I didn't factor that into the math um, related to the base costs because doing it with the software I use, it would just be too much manual work. So 8% of the, uh, so I made a little bit more money basically, but it's hard to just get the base cost um, and do the math there because it's kind of separate from the aggregate revenue number that comes through from Amazon. So um, it's something that I just deal with when I do taxes, I don't worry about it now. All right, Amazon KDP, I did 244 sales, bringing in $454.04 of profit. My average royalty was $1.86. So I was hoping December would be a big month and it did not disappoint. Uh, Have I had bigger Decembers? Yes, go check out my December KDP income report from last year. The big difference is that I had a lot of books selling last year that were tailored to being like office. You know, if you go to work and work in an office, it would be like Secret Santa style books that you can gift to your employees, coworkers, boss, manager, whoever. And given that not many people are going to the office, hardly anybody right now, um, the expected decline in those books is very evident here, unfortunately. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm not complaining about making 450 bucks of profit on the month. And uh, you can see here KDP, they were selling even on December 23rd because they're able to crank these books out and ship them out so quickly. So Amazon really did a good job there. Here's another awesome thing about KDP. If you guys aren't taking advantage, you should. You can even do KDP the easy, minimal way, which is what I've been doing lately because I haven't had that much time to dedicate to doing anything more advanced than what I'm doing. But as you can see here, I mean, it's made me a couple thousand bucks this year from doing like next to nothing. I mean, I prepped the upload spreadsheets. I run this conversion tool to take my merch t-shirt designs, turn them into books pretty much it and then i just run it while i'm asleep um check out power kdp by the way shout out to them their upload automation tools absolutely awesome i wasn't uploading nearly as many books this year prior to finding out about power kdp because the amazon throttling thing was really making it hard to get those uploads done so uh you can see here though with kdp when you upload and you create a listing you create it on like all the amazon major international marketplaces so i had sales in uh, in America, in UK, Canada, Germany, Italy, Spain, France, and Japan. So pretty cool. All right, and let's close out with Google Ads. So I make money from a website that I made in college for fun that I've redesigned a bunch of times to become a better web developer. People like the content enough to uh, go there and you know it does okay. You can see it got a huge spike on New Year's Eve actually. Look at that, massive. And I did um, about $80 in earnings in a single day there. 
So ultimately that led to my website bringing in $537.27 of profit from Google ads on that month. I also do run some direct ads and some direct partnerships. So I mean, I make a little bit more money than that and some affiliate stuff, um, which is always nice. Um, like <laughs> I do one for, uh, for Postmates, if you guys know, like the food delivery app. And so I get a bunch of like free food from people that sign up using my link. Um, pretty, pretty nice. It's not like I'm getting rich from that. I don't get paid cash. I get paid in like free food, but you know, yesterday I ordered breakfast for, uh, Marielle, my girlfriend and I, so little things like that. So if you guys want to learn how to start a website, let me know in the comments below. Maybe in the future, I'll talk about that. Maybe I'll do like a really long video. I've been seeing people on YouTube doing like three hour videos and they seem to do pretty well. So maybe I can try to do something like that. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so that was 537 bucks from the website, $4,992 from YouTube of ad revenue. So the aggregate total was $5,529.62 of profit from Google ads. Not bad at all. Thank you to all the YouTube subscribers and thank you to everybody that visited the, uh, the website that I am not going to share because again, I, I've said this before, but I, it's, it accepts user submitted content and some of it's controversial and I don't want to censor free speech. I'm not a fan of that, even though there's a lot of that going on in 2020 to 2021. So I'm not going to share the site, but, um, anyways, you can see here, Google analytics, little glimpse into the, uh, traffic there going onward to YouTube looking at the analytics um, in the month of December 256,000 views again thank you guys watch time 25,400 hours 4,100 subscribers gained and just under $5,000 of revenue so thank you again guys um, for you know supporting the YouTube efforts I do appreciate it and uh, there you go subscriber count gained this is from a website called Social Blade. You can get like a live subscriber feed. So I always like to check that out. It's pretty cool. I'm up to like 52,000 and 200, I think, subscribers. And it's awesome, guys. Thank you for letting me hit 50,000 subscribers in 2020, by the way. That was that was special. All right. So let's scroll back to the top. By the way, if you guys want to follow along in your own time, I always put a link in the description to where you can read and follow along with the income report on my personal blog. And if you're not on my email list, you know, go sign up for that. And then I'll email you whenever these uh, income reports are released. So you can go check out the numbers, which I got to do after this video now that I'm thinking about it. All right. So monthly totals uh, in the lead, actually, Google ads, $5,529 uh, in total generated there. In second place, Amazon FBA, $4,884.44 profit. Amazon Merch, $4,608 of profit. Dropship Print on Demand, $1,800, sorry, $1,682.47 of profit. And finally, Amazon KDP, $454.04 of profit, bringing my monthly total for December to, let me look at my side monitor here, uh, bringing it to $1,000. Uh, $17,159.37. Now that's a pretty good month, but let me just also reference my November 2020 income report where I made $20,529 profit. And if you guys remember that video, I said, okay, well, I earned about one Bitcoin worth of profit. <laughs> and if you follow Bitcoin at all, or if you follow me on Instagram, every now and then I post about it, but yeah, I did invest that that November money into a Bitcoin. And I mean, I own more than one Bitcoin, but like I put my money where my mouth is. I was like, yeah, I earned one Bitcoin of profit. And when we broke through the $20,000 resistance, I know a lot of people think that means, oh, it's time to sell. We hit 20K. No, 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 opposite. We just broke resistance. So I was buying at that point, buying more. And uh, it went up as high as like, you know, 30, just under 35,000, which I think is the around the next resistance level that we're going to face our, the Bitcoin owners. So... Or did it actually hit 35? Came pretty close. Anyways, I almost made as much money on my Bitcoin investment as I did from that one Bitcoin as I did from all of these cash generating um, passive you know, businesses. And the reason I'm sharing that, it's not to brag about owning Bitcoin. It's really truly to like, I, th I just want to impart my perspective on you guys um, since you're still watching. I really believe that to build real wealth, it's not just building businesses. But then taking some of the cash flow from those businesses and buying assets that appreciate in value, especially right now, as we go through a crazy time in all of our lives and the U.S. dollar is losing, it's literally losing value, you know, it's being inflated away. And so you have to buy assets to hedge against that. Bitcoin's only one of them. I think a balanced approach is a good idea. 
Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but I do take interest in this stuff. So, um, you know, gold, Bitcoin, stocks, something that appreciates. If you go and you buy a new car, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses money. That's not what I'm talking about. All right, so anyways, that's all I wanted to mention at the end of this video, guys. But thank you for watching. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I got a bunch of good videos planned this week, so I will see you guys tomorrow. We're going to do some more recaps on uh, December. I think I might do my December Redbubble report. And then after that, we'll do some year in review 2020 videos talking more in depth about each of these uh, passive income models. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys soon.